What's up guys, welcome back. And I wanted to talk about letting, releasing emotional charge from your goal, from your intention. And I, there's a post here, I'm gonna read the post, but I'm also going to basically just kind of cover this. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's, let's just do it. Um, this was the missing ingredient in my manifestation journey. So with some recent manifestations, I realized there was a subtle missing ingredient in my journey. It was not deliberately living in the state of knowing, living in the end, imagining, or anything that requires some del deliberate effort. It was the state of indifference to the outcome. This is what drastically collapsed time and space for me. This is why like that stoic, those stoic principles of being, of indifference, of neutrality, are so key when it comes to all of this, when it comes to being a master of yourself, when you master yourself and your emotions, that is when you are able to influence your reality. Yesterday, I remembered a friend owed me money and he had not returned it or even talked about it for the past eight months. Just moments after I thought about it, I decided, what the hell, I'll let it go. I'm not gonna ask for the money now. Two hours later, the friend who I hadn't spoken to in three to four months, made an online transfer and sent an apology note for the delay on his own. I wasn't deliberately living in the end, in the state of the wish fulfilled or in the knowing. I did not use my imagination deliberately to visualize him giving me the money back. In fact, my mind thought the opposite. I literally thought I'm okay not receiving the money and bam, there was an instant manifestation. Why didn't it matter what my mind thought? because the mind doesn't manifest awareness and consciousness does. In the past few days, this also happened with some other big and small things. Um, to manifest is one thing, but within hours with this very subtle approach is not coincidence. I thought about this and in my opinion, when you're trying to live in the end or deliberately trying to do anything, you're not really living in the end. Every state has an opposite and that's what makes it a state. That's what makes it dual. The two states are the friend giving me my money back versus him not doing so. Once you acknowledge both, you collapse the duality between them. Coincidentally, let go of all resistance regarding either. What remains is your awareness of the friend and the money. Once you're aware of these without any attachment to either state, you can get it because you are simply aware. I had to bring it to my awareness to receive the money, but let go of any duality so that I remained in a non-resistant awareness without any ifs and buts. When you're resistant to any one of the two states, you're resistant to both of them. And what goes on is a never ending cycle of ping pong. So I got out of my own way effortlessly and my God self brought me back my money. Notice it still had to come to my awareness first. I did not get my money in those eight months until it came to my awareness. At least for me, this has been a game changer. Um, so I know, I know different techniques work for different people. This is for those who haven't had much success with, with deliberate techniques and efforts. So there's an important comment here, which says, I had a Qigong teacher who taught me this technique in a different way. He would have people identify what they didn't want allowed as a clearing statement. So bringing up the thing you don't want and saying you want it. In this instance, it would be like, I don't want my friend to pay me back. I want people to constantly disrespect me by not paying me back. The point would be to feel the emotion and consciously release it. Once the charge was neutralized, the person would often experience a shift. Somebody else says, the Sedona method teaches a similar, something similar. I personally also believe that the less the desire, the less friction there is. Nonetheless, the issue for me is in the point of all our desires and wishing the issue with me is that isn't the point of all our desires and wishing of it, material or spiritual achievements to be happy and excited. Some broken sentence in there. So, um, okay. Somebody says, I suppose the ideal state is one of excitement towards the unfolding of the desire without any desperation towards it. I think this is only possible by reaching an inner fulfillment with what you already have, a sense of fulfillment. If you are incredibly happy with the meal you're eating, you can still have excitement towards the dessert, but you're not going to be desperate for the dessert, as opposed to being completely reluctant to your meal and desperately wanting the dessert instead. It seems in a state of resistance and lack, you start manifesting more resistance and lack and the dessert never arrives. My point being desperation does not equal excitement. You can have excitement without the desperation. 
Somebody says that that's, they love that analogy. Somebody else says the desire isn't the problem, it's the anxiety slash fear of it not coming true. Desire is good if it's rooted, but not if it's in a, rooted in a sense of lack. Being in lack attracts more lack. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, what you resist persists. And another person's comment here says, I had this, I recently overcame my perpetual anxiety through this kind of mindset. Two days ago, I decided I couldn't handle this suffering and anxiety anymore and I had a shift. I thought, why not just think of this anxiety and fear as a positive experience? So as I'm having the anxiety attack, I think, anxiety, my friend, you're the only tr thing that truly makes me feel alive, fuck yeah. What a beautiful emotion to feel. And I could feel the anxiety disappear as soon as it came. Somebody said anxiety got anxious about you and ran. Um, this is something that, yeah, like I, I really, this is, there's really something to this, especially this clearing statement by the Qigong teacher. It's, it's like facing your fears dead in the face, right? I don't want my friend to pay me back. I don't need this relationship. I don't want this relationship. It's that not, it's again, it's like the not technique, which I've talked about before. But uh, it can release the emotional charge. Even with something like resistance, it's like this person saying, oh, your anxiety or resistance. You could be like, yeah, I'm feeling resistance. I love feeling resistance. Every time I feel resistance, it just makes, it just is a sign to me that I'm like becoming more and more powerful, that my manifestations are more and more close. I'm getting closer and closer to my goal every time I feel resistance towards it. Every single failure that I have is bringing me closer to the goal. That's another thing, the failure thing. Um, there is, yeah, that's a whole nother, that's another topic, but I mean, embracing failure as well is like a lot of people that have success go through failures. They're like glossed over, but though you can look at failures as stepping stones to your success. I mean, we've talked about this before. The good, neutral, fine, or the complete opposite of don't have it. You can't force indifference either. If you have to force something, you're coming from a state of, I don't have it, or I, don't, or I need to do something to get something I don't have. Anyways, guys, um, <laughs> how to reduce the emotional charge by essentially using the not technique, by essentially agreeing with the thing that you fear is an interesting way of doing it. So with that being said, guys, much love as always. Drop this with a like. Hopefully this was helpful. Hit me with a subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.